Scientists think that the liquid water on Earth came from two sources. The first one is comets, which are big balls of ice that struck the Earth. And the second was from the rocks in the Earth's interior itself. Because water is trapped in the rocks in the Earth's interior and they escape as vapor from volcanoes as the Earth's core heated up and melted. The water vapor from those volcanoes condensed to form the oceans, so basically it rained a lot um, and then created the oceans. The early Earth had an atmosphere similar to the gases escaping from those volcanoes. The air was extremely high in water, carbon dioxide, and sulfur. The rain coming down in the early Earth's atmosphere was often fairly acidic. Over time, photosynthesis by bacteria, early protists, and early plants added free oxygen to the Earth's atmosphere. This picture is a picture of Mammoth Hot Springs in Yellowstone, and it's very similar to what they thought the Earth looked like originally. Obviously, studying all of the Earth and its interactions and influences would be impossible for one branch of science. Remember when I said that Earth science is interdisciplinary? Well, it has branches that help science, scientists focus on one aspect of the Earth sciences so that they can understand each piece of the puzzle independently and in depth. Geologists study the origin, history, and structure of the Earth and the processes that shape it. In physical geology, um, geologists use a number of field, laboratory, and numerical modeling methods to decipher Earth history and understand the processes that occur on and in the Earth. In typical geological investigations, geologists use primary information related to petrology, which is the study of rocks, stratigraphy, which is the study of sedimentary layers, and structural geology, which is the study of positions of rock units and their deformation. In many cases, geologists also study modern soils, rivers, landscapes, and glaciers, and use geophysical methods to in investigate the subsurface. In historical ge geology, they use the principles of geology to reconstruct and understand the history of the Earth. It focuses on the geologic processes that change the Earth's surface and subsurface, and the use of many techniques to tell the sequence of these events. It also focuses on the evolution of plants and animals during different time periods in the geologic time scale. Astronomy is another major category of Earth science, and it is the study of extraterrestrial objects and events. Astronomers study stars, planets, interstellar gases, etc. This picture is of the Lagoon Nebula. Meteorology studies the weather and its related phenomena. Meteorologists study air, air pollution, forecast the weather, and study the climate. This is a mesocyclone formation in this picture. Oceanography studies the oceans and seas, whereas hydrology studies other bodies of water such as rivers, lakes, streams, and underground water supplies. This large branch of earth science also studies ocean chemistry, seafloor geology, coastal processes, and the life forms that are found in the oceans. The Earth is considered a closed system, but the subsystems of the Earth are considered open because they interact with one another. For our final topic, let's take a look at those subsystems. The first of them is the geosphere, and the concept of a solid Earth is really misleading. The thinnest part of the Earth's structure beneath our feet is actually solid. It's made up of the crust and the upper part of the mantle that is solid. Together they make up the lithosphere, and the thickness is no more than 100 kilometers thick. It's about the same amount as the skin on an apple makes up the rest of the apple. The asthenosphere is the portion of the mantle that is circulating between the solid and fluid portions. This is the part of the crust that rides on the large tectonic plates, and the movement of the asthenosphere is directly responsible for building and breaking down the crust. This movement can cause earthquakes and volcanic eruptions. The mantle is the thickest part of the geosphere. It is a part of the lithosphere and all of the asthenosphere, and the non-circulating portions that are just referred to as the mantle. This portion is primarily fluid rock and is very, very hot. The core begins 2,900 kilometers below the surface, and it is made up of two parts. 
The outer core is liquid and the inner core is solid. The inner core is mostly made up of iron. And I'll tell you why we know this much later um, in a future lecture. This is the zone of liquid water on Earth. It is dominated by the oceans, which is over 70% of the surface of the Earth, but it also includes the lakes, rivers, and liquid underground water. The atmosphere is a subsystem that is made up of several layers. The bottom 10 kilometers is the troposphere. The sun warms the air, but as the air rises, it cools and sinks. And this causes a constant churning in the troposphere, which results in weather. The next layer is the stratosphere. The air here is too thin for the warm air to continue rising. The stratosphere has cold air at the bottom of the layer, and next layers up get warmer. It is extremely stable here, and because of that stability, commercial airplanes fly at the lower boundary of the stratosphere. Military aircraft fly higher in the stratosphere. Near the top of the stratosphere is the ozone layer, and the ozone layer absorbs ultraviolet light from the sun and helps to protect the Earth's surface. The next layer is a mesosphere. In this layer is found the coldest temperatures in the Earth's atmosphere, which is about negative 95 degrees Celsius, or somewhere around negative 170 degrees Fahrenheit. The thermosphere above that is extremely thin air. It is so thin that the energy from the sun causes the atoms of air to accelerate and increase the temperature here. But there would not be a noticeable difference to us if we could survive those conditions long enough to feel it because of the lack of actual air molecules. And finally, the exosphere is where the Earth's, Earth's atmosphere tapers off into space. Once reading, reaching the exosphere, it's often referred to as outer space. The final subsystem of the Earth's uh, closed system is called the biosphere, and it is the domain of all living things. It overlaps the geosphere, hydrosphere, and atmosphere. Living things are found as deep as several kilometers into the lithosphere and about 10 kilometers above the surface of the Earth. This concludes a lot of topics for the first lecture, but it is a get your feet wet sort of talk. Please try out the practice quizzes this week. They are open all throughout the semester, and if you have any questions, see me during office hours. Have a fantastic day.